Once upon a time, there was a witch who lived in a strange cottage. Her maid, whom she had stolen from a well-to-do family, was as pretty as a picture, but invariably hungry, since the witch kept all the best food for herself. One day, the witch baked some cakes in the oven, but she fell asleep in front of the TV, and consequently, they were baked rock hard. Put them on the shelf, child. I'll throw them at the cats later. But I could eat them. I'm hungry, and my teeth are strong and white. Never, said the witch, whose teeth were loose and black. Now get back to work. But the leathery cakes were too tempting for the maid, and though it was like eating five snooker balls, she nevertheless ate them up before visiting her dentist for emergency bridge work. When the witch saw the cakes were gone, she ran to her front door to tell everyone. An old king happened to be riding past. She ate the fun. Five cakes of mine. Did you say today she spun five bales of twine? I did, said the witch, ever the opportunist. In which case, she can come and live at the palace. And if she does, as you say, she can marry my son. So, when the maid got back from the dentist, the witch packed her off to the palace, where the king showed her to a room in the tower and demanded that she produce five bales of twine by sunrise. But I can't spin. What's that? Your auntie will? Said the deaf king. Oh, forget it, said the maid, turning attention to the job in hand. By midnight, she hadn't produced a centimeter of twine. Never mind five bales. And she was ready to give up when through the little tower window popped a green goblin. What's your problem? The maid told him she only had a few hours to produce five bales of twine or... Or what? Or I won't be allowed to marry the prince. No problem. I'll spin for you. And I'll take your gold necklace as payment. The maid was horrified to lose her one possession of value. In a flurry of activity, the goblin set to work, and by daybreak, it was all done. As the sun rose, the little goblin hopped out of the window, clutching the gold necklace, as the maid awaited the king's arrival. He was amazed at the progress. At this rate, I'll be... A textile magnet. He commanded the maid to spend another night in the tower and produce more bales of twine. How many bales? Any snails? Idiots! I heard that. It's ten minutes to four, if you must know. As before, the goblin arrived after nightfall. He again agreed to help the maid, but wanted payment. But I've nothing left to give you. Not now you haven't. But when you marry the prince, you can give me your firstborn child. The maid was sure the prince would never marry her, a common maid. So she might as well promise the goblin whatever he wanted. Okay, she said, at which the little fellow got down to work. So by the morning, the bales of twine were spun. 
and the king, true to his word, promised that the girl could marry his son in three days' time. Paul asked, Is you bear me a child? When the goblin came that evening, she begged him not to take her firstborn. The prince will never forgive me. All he wants is a child. Very well, I'll let you off, provided he can guess my name by the wedding ceremony. Three days to guess a boy's name. It should not be that bad. She started right away. Derek? No. Wayne? No. Ebenezer? No. John? No. As time passes, the maid got more desperate. She looked through every book in the king's library in search of names. Blue? No. Brody? No. Not even close. Soon, the fateful day of the wedding arrived. Everyone had been invited, and still she had not thought of a name. As the service got underway, her time had all but run out. Who gives this man? Terry? No. Jerry? No. To be her wedded husband. Is it Jerry who gives this man? No, it's not. Tom Tit-Tot? Just by accident, the king had guessed the right name. Tom Tit-Tot. Yeah! Whoopee! Whoopee! And so, thanks to a deaf king and a torturous plot, this tale has a happy ending after all. The prince and the maid eventually had a baby, settling on the name Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin, come and tidy your bedroom.